Okay, joining me today are Wayne Besson, Executive Director of Truth Wins Out at truthwinsout.org, and also uh, Dr. Michael Brown, host of the nationally syndicated daily talk program, The Line of Fire, and author of A Queer Thing Happened to America, as well as 20 other books. Now, I want to start, I think the best order to do this in, since the pitch I received included a criticism of Wayne Besson from Dr. Brown, would be first to go to Dr. Brown to have him explain to us exactly what is his criticism of Wayne Besson um, in terms of, uh, uh, as it relates to the uh, Family Research Council shooting. So, Dr. Brown, let me go to you first. Sure. Thanks, David. Uh, first, I'd just like to apologize to you and your viewers for cutting our last interview short. It was getting close to my own radio sound check time, and I, I didn't think your questions were serious, so that was my fault. It was unprofessional, and I uh, apologize for cutting that short. Thanks for giving me the opportunity to do that. As far as Wayne, I don't question his passion, his sincerity for the cause, but what concerns me is, is this, and in no way am I saying he's responsible for the shooting at FRC, God forbid, but what concerns me is this. When he writes that the people at FRC loathe homosexuals, or when after my group uh, last year gives out 2,500 bottles of water saying Jesus loves you at a gay pride event here in Charlotte, that, that he writes about me, that I'm a pathological monster trying to incite violence against LGBT people uh, and, and many other things like that. I, I feel that that unnecessarily inflames things. This past Sunday, protesters came to our church, my home church, where they hear me preach and teach, and they left after a little while saying, you guys don't deserve a protest. You're too loving. And I'm having dinner with the main protester next week who said he met with absolutely perfect love. So, so I find this kind of rhetoric to be hurtful, destructive. And I think we can talk through our differences and have our profound differences without calling people pathological monsters who are trying to incite violence against the gay and lesbian community. I would die for the gay and lesbian community rather than incite violence. Okay, Wayne, let me go to you. Feel free to respond to both uh, Dr. Brown's claims about you. And if you want, defend why you think he is a pathological uh, liar, whatever it is you said. Not only is he a pathological uh, monster, uh, he's also a coward. Because what he does is he incites people to violence, in my view. Just look at his rhetoric. He's got a talk show called The Line of Fire. His online magazine is The Voice of Resolu Revolution, and he runs the uh, Fire School of Ministry, which, and the goal of that is to raise up a holy army of uncompromising, spirit-filled radicals who will shake an entire generation with the gospel of Jesus Christ by life or death. I think it's this combination of, of uh, militaristic language and the demonizing of a minority that uh, sparked my uh, view of uh, Mr. Brown. I also believe he comes across here as uh, very kind and nice, but again, it's a fraud. What he's trying to do is come across as somebody reasonable and rational rather than the extremist that he is. What he's not telling you is that he went to Charlotte Pride, for example, with the intent of, of basically, as he calls, uh, of ending gay rights. And that's what, and, and teaming up with Lou Engel, one of the most radical clerics in this nation, who went to Uganda to promote the anti homosexuality bill, which could lead to the death of gay people. That's what he's not telling you. These are some of the, uh, let me just read a couple of his comments about what he was doing at Charlotte Pride. He said he was there to, um, because of destructive goals of gay activism. He said, it stops here in Charlotte. Well, what does that mean? What do you intend to do, Mr. Brown? Uh, how are you going to stop uh, this, this, the rights and the acceptance of, of gay people, which is now at 70% for people 18 to 30, without um, maybe some of your more militaristic uh, values that you're, 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 you're whitewashing and sugarcoating here? That's you a fair question. Let's, Wayne, let's pause there, because otherwise we'll forget all the... I want to... Let's go one by one. Dr. Brown, do you, are you okay with any kind of militaristic action to prevent the further of gay rights, as Wayne alleges? God forbid. God forbid. It, it's so ironic that Wayne sits in front of a sign that says truth wins out, and either everything he said was misinformation, lies, misrepresentation. First, I never oh. knew, I never knew that Fire School of Ministry, calling something Fire, Fellowship for International Revival and Evangelism, was militaristic. Secondly, Jesus requires us to take up the cross and follow him. In many parts of the world where our missionaries serve, their lives are threatened. 
persecution against Christians is very real. That statement about our school mission came years before I ever even got engaged in homosexual activism. We have friends working in the Hindu world, Muslim world, dangerous communist places. And yes, their lives are sometimes threatened. Our whole message, if you actually read my books and listened, is put down the sword of violence and hatred. The Jesus revolution, as I say daily on my radio show, is one that overcomes hatred with love, one that overcomes deception with truth. That's why for years I said, Wayne, let's talk. Let's have public dialogue. That remains my posture. All you can say is that I'm lying, candy coating. The fact is this is who we really are. So what do we do? And by the way, Lou Engel did not go to Uganda to promote the bill. That's also a misconception. What did Lou do? We prayed across the street from the gay pride event, about 500 people, and got on our knees and repented of our sins. And we, we got up and publicly apologized to the gay and lesbian community. You know, that's Lou, why, that's why Wayne, people are this, this, document, Wayne, this is documented. This is all clearly seen. No one has ever heard me utter a word of hate or violence against the gay community. Sadly, you are inciting people with lies and misinformation about me. And if I was not a public figure, they would actually be libelous. They are that seriously wrong, Wayne. It's a fact. Well, you know, we'll tell you what, pal. Why don't you sue me? Because you are a liar, and I'm calling you a liar. And if you think you can win in court, take me. Let me tell you something. That's why people don't want to debate you, because you flat out don't tell the truth. You sit up there and you distort what you say and you hope people don't do the fact checking. Well, we're going to do a little fact checking here. Here's a few more of the things you've said. Do the Mr. fact checking. Do the fact checking. Wonderful. Let, let, me, let me finish. I let you misinform people. You said that uh, you went to the Exodus Conference in 2007 to what you called uh, fight a pitched attack from hell. Uh, you urged the people there to have a revolutionary mentality, and you told them life as it is is not worth living, but the cause is worth dying for. And here's a few of the things that you, you have said going into Charlotte Pride. Again, you said that the whole thing was about the destructive goals of gay activism. It stops here in Charlotte. You, you absolutely humiliated and insulted transgender people, calling them their inner tranny. Uh, you talked about them surgically mutilating themselves. You said that you were there because you don't think people should celebrate the pain of sex and brokenness, and you support ex-gay ministries. You said people were not whole and they were suffering from brokenness. And then you lied and tried to incite your followers in their intimidating red shirts, which is very rude of you to go to Pride with 500 people to intimidate people. And you said that, and you and you incited them and inflamed them by telling that they were try we were trying to put conservative Christians in the closet. If that's not insightful language combined with your militaristic language, I don't know what is. Why don't you just be honest and tell the truth about what your goals are, rather than mixing militar mis militaristic language? Um, with demonizing a minority, and, and in particular, your insulting of transgender people is, is not only obnoxious and offensive, but I just think it's morally bereft of even any kind of decency whatsoever. So, Dr. Brown, yeah. instead of uh, I would before you go into it, are the are the quotes that Wayne has attributed to you are those accurate quotes? Did you or are you do you deny that you said those things? Well, they're one hundred percent out of context and twisted. I'll uh, give but you so hold on, they're out of. But you did say those words. Yeah. Oh, you have you have to understand what was said. For example, oh, okay. inner tranny. I am quote. I am quoting. Hey, Wayne, let me talk. The, the inner tranny quote that that was from curriculum put out by Glisten that that helped kids discover their inner tranny. And I quoted that to say that's outrageous to be done in elementary schools. That's a quote from gay activists. When I say uh, life as it is is worth living, the cause is worth dying for, I said that's how revolutionaries think. What's the pitched hell against uh, the pitched attack from hell? It's the attack to destroy gay and lesbian people. That's what I'm talking about. I, you know, everything is taken and twisted. Wayne, I wrote a whole book called Revolution with war chapter after chapter talking about the example of Jesus, talking about lay down your life for the, for, for the lost, lay down your life. Every human being is broken. You're broken. I'm broken. That's why we need Jesus. That's why we preach him. And, and to show up at a gay pride event, a gay pride event is making a very public, loud statement in the community. And it's also a family day and it's doing other things. We are there as believers to say we love you and we differ. We handed out 2,500 bottles of water that said, Jesus loves you. And we said not a single hateful word. We didn't stand and preach. We walked among the crowd, moms, dads, kids. You, Wayne, lie by calling them unstable thugs. You, Wayne, lie by saying, I'm trying to incite people to violence. 
Every quote is either ripped out of context. Look, you can take the words of Jesus and rip them out of context. I'm quoting you in context. And sadly, rather than saying, you know, Mike, I've overstated things. It's, it's damaging and insightful to say what I said, to say you're a pathological monster trying to incite violence against gay and lesbian people. You can call me whatever you want. But to, to say that I'm trying to incite violence is a bold-faced lie. And that's why the folks in my church that hear me preach and teach, when gay protesters came, met them with the love of God. That's why the chief protester is having dinner with me with his partner next week so we can talk face-to-face. That's why I've repeatedly said, Wayne, let's have public debate and dialogue. Let's put everything on the table. Let's set it up where we can take two hours face-to-face in a neutral setting with, with, with neutral moderators because I have nothing to hide. I've written 22 books. Quote one thing in context that is inflammatory or destructive. Everything is based with compassion for all people, but we have profound differences. The only thing that is in context is, yes, I believe the goals of gay activism are destructive to marriage and family and religious liberty. And yes, I do believe there are gay activists who want to silence us, which is why GLAAD put out a list of 36 commentators last year. I was one of them telling the media, do not have these people on. That to me is trying to silence the other side. You don't like it when a group came against you and tried to get Fox to take you off. The same has been done to me and others. Well, let's for a give Wayne time. a chance to respond here. Sure thing. Yeah, you, my, Michael, you're just dishonest, and you keep saying things are out of context, but but the context, but they're not. In fact, they're very much in context. What you do is again cowardly because you incite people. You, you know, you talk about uh, you, you talk about uh, you don't nothing you said was damaging, but the way you promoted this thing was completely by scaring people and telling them that they want to 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 stop gay activism is what you did, um, and and then you went there and people said they were intimidated that that they weren't. They weren't just drinking your water. When you surround, as you said you were going to do, 500 people who, who man, many of these people who have been the pride have already been victims of religious persecution. They go there to feel good about themselves. And you go there with an enormous number of people in red shirts, like an uninvited, obnoxious house guest that won't leave to intimidate and incite. Uh, and people said they felt intimidated. So I don't know what you're talking about. And you're selectively uh, it, it cutting out how people actually felt about your presence there. You weren't wanted. Yet you went, that's your right to do that. But but don't get me wrong. It's rude. It's obnoxious. It's unchristian. Okay, gentlemen, I know that there's plenty much more to say, and I know it's unlikely we're going to be able to resolve all of these issues. I think it's great that you both appeared here. Comments were made uh, indirectly. Now we have at least gotten both of you here. I'm glad to have a longer conversation when we have uh, more time, and of course I would encourage both of you to have that longer conversation as well. Uh, We've been speaking with Dr. Michael Brown, also uh, Wayne Besson from Truth Wins Out. Gentlemen, thank you very much for being here today. Thank you.